everybody how are you welcome to stock trading pro my name is pete renzulli we have a ton of stuff to talk about today what an amazing reaction uh, by the Federal Reserve last week. And but more importantly, I think the reaction from the market refusing to go down, big tech companies, higher interest rates, lower earnings, layoffs, and they went up as well. Apple, I think, leading the way higher, finally got above that long-term downtrend that we had, I believe, going back to August. But today, today we have a really, really big question. And I'm going to bring this in here just to start things off and really get the week going. We're going to answer this question right now. Is this comment by Michael Burry wrong is michael burry the big short dude wrong this time is he leaning into this big short position that he has in different circumstances last time which was obviously the subprime crisis today's going to be really interesting because we're actually going to break it down from start to finish everything that's going on in the market right now everything that happened in the stock market during january which is going to take us all the way up to is michael burry's prediction wrong. And I think my answer is going to surprise you today. And here's the big thing that I want to get across. When we discuss this part of uh, Michael Burry's analysis and what he believes is going on in the stock market and where the stock market is headed based on interest rates, based on inflation, based on the jobs numbers and all of those kind of things, the answer that we're going to review today as a community here on YouTube is going to directly affect you. Because a lot of people trade to be right in the market and that's not the way to make money. And I'm going to break that down because we're going to use Michael Burry's call as a, uh, a big sign to teach everybody what it really means to be a trader versus what it means to be a chart reader. And there's certain things that line up where you could have made a really solid argument for the short side of the market and looking for stuff to go down. But boy, what a five-week rally that we had in tech stocks. Just absolutely amazing. So in the context of everything that we're going to talk about today, we're actually going to break down our newsletter like we do every single Monday, the Daily Ticker. We're going to go right through the power pyramid. And actually, you know, I'm going to give you a visual on uh, what the power pyramid looks like. This is actually what we're going to break down for you today. So we're going to start out with the major sector industries. Then we're going to go up to rotation in sectors, work our way up to individual groups, and then um, some stock uh, specific ideas. So this is really what we're going to be leaning into today. So we're going to actually start out with uh, rotation and then we're going to see how that's going to carry it. But just stick around for just one second. I need to put this up on the screen. Okay. So obviously, thank you so much for being here with me today. You got some uh, beautiful people here with us. Uh, LJ, how's it going? LJ, we're going to have that trade station set up uh, coming up as well. And yeah, we actually, for those of you that are in our community, um, I was actually at a mastermind uh, group last week in Orlando. Oh my word, just some high level thinking. It's just amazing to be around people who think bigger, don't focus on problems. They do focus on solutions. They do focus on taking action. I hope you've had that some kind of an experience like that as well. And LJ, uh, we actually had a really, really long recap of what my week was like last week and how that led into some uh, really big mindset shifts to everybody in the community. One big thing that I can share with you is get those people out of your life that think small and tell you what's not possible. Surround yourself with a smaller group of people, kind of like we're doing here in the morning uh, right now um, on YouTube, with people that think big, people that think, why not me? People that think, why can't I do it? Those are the kind of people that you want to be around, and those are the people that are in our community. Um, actually, you know, I just want to do one other thing, if you can just indulge me for a second. Um, we actually have our next boot camp to actually trade with me this week. It's a 14-day boot camp. Uh, we get a lot of questions about what it's like to be in the boot camp. I know we have a lot of people here uh, that are either in the community with us right now or um, just starting a boot camp right now. So if you want, you can actually take a screenshot of this. The boot camp starts today. If you want to learn more about it, you can click and enroll. Uh, it's actually in the video uh, in the screen below us. So this is really the way it starts. There's, there's really four components. After we have the welcome, then we have the order flow stacking, which is the system that I use, uh, which is the New York method. Then we have some power sessions. Our first power session is actually today at 12 o'clock, uh, which is setting up the charts. And you can actually see what else is in there, uh, which includes the daily ticker every day, which is what we're about to show you. Then we have live trading together, which includes my audio broadcast and then coaching sessions. So um, if you're interested in joining us in the next 14-day boot camp, which actually starts today, you can click below into the description, and there's a full uh, there's a full um, breakdown of everything that's included. So, big thing we want to talk about now. Let's break down the market. Let's get into sector rotation, and we're going to knock out exactly what's going on. But we're actually going to start out here 
Uh, and what we like to do is we like to focus on the last four weeks of price action. It's kind of uh, the way that institutions do it. And we're looking for a pattern, right? So we actually had some pretty good price action. All things considered last week with the Fed announcement, earnings, layoffs, and all that kind of stuff, really a pretty good move. Uh, communication services actually uh, pulled higher in a monstrous way last week by Meta. Uh, and now we actually have Pinterest uh, scheduled to report after hours. So you want to keep an eye on that as well. Uh, but let's keep going. Let's look at, we're looking now for money and we're building an argument. So we're building an argument for this week. We have to say, does the market still have more juice to be looking to be buying the best stocks right now? Or are we most likely going to have some profit taking this week? Well, if you really kind of think it through, again, don't make it complicated. Just say, why did the market go up for the last five weeks? Well, there was earnings season and more specifically, industrials report a lot of them, but big tech stocks even in the face of layoffs and disappointing guidance could not stop the market from going higher. That's a big thing. But now we got to think forward, right? We got to keep going forward, which now we're going to break down what's going on um, with Michael Burry. Okay. And how this directly affects all of us. So what I'm going to do here first uh, is we're going to go up here into the market and obviously we're going to start out here. Right. Uh, and by the way, uh, let me just, um, I just want to tell you, if you want to get a copy of this, what we're about to cover right now, this is a sample of what I do for our community behind the scenes every day. Uh, whether you're in a boot camp or whether you're in me for one of my longer term coaching programs, you get a part of this every single day. So I'm actually doing all the work for you. You really just have to follow along and ask really good questions. So in the description below this video right now, you can actually grab a copy of this. So click file, download, uh, file copy and make yourself a copy or you can download it. Okay. So we want to go over here, incredible price action after earnings in the FOMC announcement. So we're kind of building up into why did stocks rally? It was kind of an anticipation of earnings season. It was an anticipation of the Fed raising by 25 basis points instead of 50, right? Just when you thought the good news was priced in, buyers stepped up. Now, this is a really important thing that we want to take a look at uh, in the market last week specifically. And we're going to drop in volume in here. And this is a big part of the analysis. So this is actually a 30-day moving average of volume. And you can see four out of five days last week had increased volume with all of that massive news. And you can see we're getting a little bit of profit taking, which should not really shock after this big kind of a move to the upside. If you remember, probably about two weeks ago, we went over the four different stages of volume. And one of those that we talked about was exhaustion. And exhaustion is usually after a big move in one particular direction. And then after that abnormally long buying pressure or selling pressure, but in this case, buying pressure, you start to see very, very heavy volume, which is also known as a cleanup print, as they used to call it on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Maybe they do, but maybe there's, there's so many electronic things going on down there right now. It's mostly uh, computers doing that trading. So we're seeing a little bit of profit taking. Now, I want to walk you through something. We actually have an options update here today as well, where you have to learn to know the difference between a pullback and a reversal. So we're getting some very heavy volume last week into that news. So think about this. If you were a hedge fund, let's say, uh, let's say Allison. Let's say Allison owns a hedge fund and she's been buying at the end of December into January and you get this massive five week move off the lows from the beginning of January into, uh, let's say now the first week of February as we're starting right now. You get these percentage gains that are just absolutely amazing, right? We break through 400, we get some separation, which was the big level that we were watching 400 in the S&P 500, the SPY ETF. Would you right now be thinking about taking some profits? I think a lot of people are right now because we're still kind of not necessarily out of the woods. It's encouraging. But here's the thing. Why would we go higher from here now? That's the question. Because remember, we discount into the future. Now, we're probably this week. And I like to always talk about what I, I see on the tape going forward. I don't like to talk about what happened. We're here to make money about next day, today, like after it's going to happen. What I see end up unfolding this week is probably a couple of days of profit taking and then reestablishing that kind of bullish move to the upside. So we're kind of mapping out the entire week, but let's let's break it down. We're going to go through the sector, the market, Michael Burry, sectors, industry groups, and then an individual stock pick. And I think I'm going to surprise you a little bit on the stock pick this week uh, and heading into today as well. Okay. So if we continue to work our way through here, NASDAQ pulled everything higher as order flow continues to shift out of industrial stocks and into tech. So when we're talking about out of industrial stocks, Boeing has been one of the stronger stocks 
as you can see here, going all the way back into um, October. And hopefully you've been with us for a while. And um, we have pushed, not pushed, that's not the right word. We pushed the concept of sector rotation and order flow into industrials from the fall of 2022. So hopefully you joined us on that. Boeing and General Electric specifically have been the big ones that kind of pulled the Dow Jones Industrial Average higher. And now they're kind of going sideways a little bit. Earnings were pretty good last week in General Electric since they spun off GE Healthcare. Uh, but now you can actually see the, the biggest leader of the bunch, Boeing. It's not bearish, but it's a lot less bullish right now. Now, when I say bullish, it's been going sideways for roughly three weeks. The whole point that I want to get across is these are easy things to learn to spot. Obviously, I'm pointing them out to you, and I kind of do this every day. But what we're really talking about is if we put our money to work right now, where is the best place for the likely profit target to being hit, the likely movement in that direction? So while these industrial stocks are still bullish, you can see that they've cooled off a little bit. They're kind of moving sideways, and that money shifted over into these tech stocks. And that should not be that hard to see. You can actually see the cues here as well, right? So these are the kind of things that I just hopefully what we're doing here. In our, in our meetings together is I'm, I'm inspiring you to just simplify what you're doing and just make your trading really kind of common sense. Where is the smart money flowing now? Where has it stopped flowing? And maybe even on the other side of the market, which we're going to talk about in just about four minutes, is where is money flowing out of, which we call bearish order flow. And we actually have two separate sectors that I want to walk you through on that. One of them is healthcare and one of them is energy. And we're going to talk about the different catalysts that we might want to see in the news especially in the oil industry, oil and gas, for us to possibly look to start to pick up some of those shares. But right now, they've been kind of a mess. We've been calling them false breakout um, mess, for lack of a better way of putting it. So I'm getting ahead of myself, but let, let's keep going. All right. All right. So let's say for argument's sake now, this is what Michael's thought, right? The market clearly has an opinion on the less severe interest rate hike. So this is actually really what everybody's leaning into right now. Despite the fact that inflation is still pretty high, we are starting to see inflation come down and we are starting to see interest rates come down because the Fed is starting to feel like they put enough pressure on that, right? So this is the big tweet that everybody's been talking about since last week, right? 131.23. Uh, Michael Burry continues to tweet bearish warnings, but the market isn't listening. So let, let me ask you a question right now. What's more important, Michael Burry's opinion or what the market is doing? Right? It really depends. And I know that's an answer not a lot of people want, but let's we're going to keep pushing this forward. I need you to really be thinking while I'm doing this, we're kind of doing a mentoring session right now. Think through what your objective is for the trade. Are you investing and you're holding on for a long term? Doesn't matter what's going on. Or are you swing trading? Swing trading is with the majority of people that we speak to and we work with do. Most people have full-time jobs and they're looking to hold a trade for, let's say, the next week, the next month, the next two months. Michael Burry has a little bit bigger picture. So wrong is a very uh, interesting concept that needs to be put in the context of the trade, in this case, a big short, all right? So I want to keep going through it because I really want to spur your thinking, all right? With large cap tech stocks earnings out of the way and the FOMC, swing trades should get a little more comfortable for the next few weeks as long as the VIX remains near or below 20. So this is a very important thing that I want to get across here. Very, very important, okay? The VIX reading in 2021 was below 20 for most of the year. Now, we all know that that was kind of fueled by um, quantitative easing, but we have to just pay attention to the raw numbers, okay? When the VIX reading is below 20, the volatility index, I'm actually going to show you a chart right now, that is generally conducive, generally good buying opportunities for swing trades and, and this is the important thing, this is really where we start to prepare, and holding those trades longer as long as it's below that level, okay? So we're going to map that out and show you what that looks like right now, okay? You can see the VIX over here, below 20, and this is all of 2021. And think about how easier 2021 was. So think about what we're talking about right now. We're trying to train ourselves to be prepared for what are the better market conditions, what stock market conditions should we be looking for stocks to buy and hold them a little bit longer? The bearish move that we had in 2022 had some opportunities to be a buyer, but you kind of had to take those profits a little bit sooner because pushes to the upside were against that big, heavy move to the downside. If that shifts, 
and the VIX stays below 20 and the S&P 500 stays above 400 and tech stocks maintain that bid. I know that's a lot, right? But it's only three, three or four things. If this, if this, if this, then I'm going to feel good. We just mapped out an entire trading strategy for the first quarter of this year. That's what you have to do. All right. So let's keep moving through. Let's keep setting it up. Right. So the big question becomes, is this the big short that never was? I'm going to actually highlight that. So it's in the document here or a bear market rally setting up the mother of all crashes. And this is what's interesting here. And the truth is, it doesn't matter at least not to traders with a plan, a set of trading rules that tells them actions to take based on order flow and reading the tape. This is important here. Those who got hammered in 2022 after a glorious 2021 simply had no plan, no guidelines with if then scenarios. They predicted, then they hoped, and then they eventually prayed stocks would come back. Now, I hope if you're a regular viewer of our channel, and, and if you're not, I, please, you could do me a favor. If I'm providing some value for you, make sure you subscribe to the channel and give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. If you are a big subscriber of our channel and you um, have been listening to us over the last couple of years, trading is really about making rules. If there's any guarantee in the stock market, it's that rules keep you in the game. They protect your capital and rules keep you in winning trades provided that you have a structure to say, wow, this is an A plus scenario. I got to hang on to this thing until it tells me it's not working anymore. Which by the way, I had a conversation with somebody at my mastermind last weekend and he was telling me that he sets profit targets and gets out on those trades as soon as they hit profit targets. I can't tell you how wrong <laughs> that is to do. And we, it was a really short conversation, but one of the things I want to get across here is we have initial profit targets when we first put the trade on. So let's just say for argument's sake, we're buying a stock at 50 and based on the risk, we might be looking to get out at 59, right? That's our initial profit target for taking the risk. That's not where we're getting out. That's just to justify putting on the trade. After a stock moves up and hits your initial target that now justifies or validates or gives you positive feedback on the trade, then you have to shift over into some other kind of profit taking strategy to see how far that can go. So be very, very careful about getting out just because something got up to a certain price. We have no idea how far a stock can go, especially on some of these swing trades. Coin was up 97% in the last four weeks. What if you just got out because it hit your first target to justify that trade? You would have left all that money on the table. And that's a big part of learning how to trade as well. Big winning trades are usually exited on a pullback, not on the way up. Just keep that in mind, okay? All right, some more rules that we're building together, right? So, and that's how, that's not how to succeed because you no longer control the outcome. So basically we're talking about if you don't have any rules, right? As soon as you let go of the, result, of the trade and ask the market to do you a favor, you're no longer the one creating the results. So let's actually stop right there just for one second. What is the number one thing that we all crave from the stock market? Predictability consistency, reliability, and how much money we make. Ironically, the only way that we can achieve those things as stock traders is by having rules, by developing an edge and then rules or tactics, whatever you want to call them, but I think rules is an easier way to describe it. You have an edge and then you develop rules that tells you how to apply that edge. It's the application of following the rules all the time that gives you the consistency. So ironically, it's not predicting that will make you money and keep you in the game in the stock market. It's having rules and consistently following the rules. So really, that's kind of exciting because that means that the consistency that you're craving is inside of you based on the consistency of following your own rules. So just think about that. The consistency you want is from having rules and following them. It's not in the market. Just ask that to anybody who got crushed in 2022. They didn't have rules on the way up and they didn't have rules on the way down. And now they're sitting there hoping for the market. Don't be like that. Set basic rules of if it goes down there, I'm getting out. I'm going to take my loss. It's a business expense. If it goes up, have rules for holding those trades. Something I want to get across very clearly. I think that we can all learn to develop good stop loss discipline, right? You know, bam, that thing goes down. You're getting out of that trade. Well, I want to give you a little bit of an advanced uh, mindset shift. Learn to have discipline on your winning trades and holding them the same way that you have discipline on your losing trades when they're not working out. It will change everything for you without even making different trades. I promise you that. Okay. All right. So here's the big question. 
Is Michael Burry wrong if stocks continue to climb? No, he's not. He's no more wrong than any of your trades or my trades that don't follow through. He made a decision with the information in front of him using his own set of rules. So there we go. We're getting back into the rules, right? So whatever Michael Burry decided were the reasons. He's got a big track record. He's got a really long track record. But does that make him wrong if the market rallies right now? It doesn't. He made the best decision the same way that you might make the best decision. Maybe there's a moving average crossover. Maybe you broke through last week's high or low and you decided to put a trade on. Those were the reasons that matched your rules. Those are the reasons that matched your edge. So if the market continues to happen to rally based on his analysis, he'll get out of the trade, take his losses and move on to the next one. You have to dis disassociate a trade that doesn't make money from a bad trade or from being wrong, as long as it followed your criteria. That's the big thing. There's a distinction between I lost money and it was a good idea versus it was a bad idea and I lost money. You want, and I know it's going to sound really weird, but we talk about this all the time. You want to strive to lose money on your best ideas. And again, I'm just, if, for those of you that might be new, I just want to reiterate this because it's a massive, massively important point. Edge, trading edge means it happens most of the time, provided that you back tested it or actually traded it with real capital. So you can go into a trade and say, this happens most of the time. So every time this trade setup unfolds, I have to choose to accept risk because there's a good chance it's going to move in my favor. It's going to follow through. We use that language very carefully. But if we accept the fact that our edge happens most of the time, here's the part that most people miss. That means we also are required to accept the fact that sometimes it won't follow through. And those are still good trades in the context of our trading edge. So good ideas, some follow through, good ideas, some don't. So the mindset shift is that even if good ideas don't follow through, I have to be okay with that and kick it out. So Michael Barry is not wrong. He's trading his strategy. And you and I and all of us really need to wrap our head around that because that's what will separate you from everybody who says trading doesn't work to you saying, no, that was a really good idea. It just didn't follow through. Might want to write that down again because it will reduce your stress in the markets by about 90%. It will keep your losses small to reasonable. And then the only the next thing you need to do is learn how to hang on to your winning trades longer. Okay, so let's keep going. All right. The stock market discounts into the future. Stock prices, let me put an S in there. Stock prices move in anticipation of future conditions. We buy shares in companies because of what we believe is going to happen, right? Believe based on our edge, based on our set of rules. Some buy for appreciation, some for dividends, and what the market is likely to do in the future, like tech stocks right now. Our community is thriving in 2023. We read the headlines for a catalyst, but read the tape, the price action for trades. We have a bias, but we don't have opinions. Now, this is a very important point right here. Opinions are different because they're hard to change, and arguing with the market is an expensive exchange of reality. So I want to talk to you. I want to talk to everybody on, on, on uh, YouTube right now. I want to talk to everybody here in our social media family, right? Raise your hand if you've ever had a trade where you said, this is a trade I really like, and it starts to move in your favor, and then starts to move against you and keeps going against you. OK, but what happens is you, you move your stop loss a little bit. You kind of say, no, maybe it's not going to go. But it finally it clearly gets down to the spot where you said you were going to get out. When that happens and if you don't get out, that means that you have an opinion with a strong belief in that opinion. And that is going to be a very expensive opinion to have. One of the biggest revelations that members of our community have is the very first day. The very first thing that we do together is we talk about trading losses or a business expense. You're making your best decision with all of that information. And, and the way that we do it is I teach everybody the New York method with order flow and tape reading and the optimal entry and the profit maximizer. Um, but I want to talk to you specifically. If you've ever had that happen and raise your hand, be honest with yourself, go look in the mirror where you've moved your stop loss just as it was about to get hit. That means that you are still trading your opinion and not trading your edge. So you got to catch yourself immediately, stop it, take the loss, and do better on the next trade. That 
suggestion, that feedback, that experience, whatever you want to call that, that will save you a small fortune. And then when you get to the other side, your biggest questions are going to be, how do I hold those winning trades longer? Okay. So let's finish up here. We're talking about in the market, develop your edge, make rules and follow them. The simple path to a small fortune, right? With heavy volume after the news, after a five week rally. So what are we doing right here? We're actually putting together what's going on in the market right now to come up with our next ideas. We're most likely to see some profit taking as new valuations are considered going forward. So we're talking about valuations here, right? Shifting the conversation just a little bit. Coin has now gone up 90 something percent, I believe it was. Let's say where it was from this breakdown over here to the high. That's actually 180 percent from where it broke down into new all time lows over here. It's just an insane, insane number. So let's get back to why investors will be buying into some of these companies and coin obviously rallying with the Bitcoin rally recently as well. It's up 180% from where it was not too long ago, maybe 19 trading days ago. The valuations have changed on that right now. Are you going to be chasing 180% move to the upside? Or are you going to let it pull back a little bit? These are the things that we need to consider. Okay. So let's continue with the daily ticker. All right. The 2023 price action, simply amazing. Here's hoping you took advantage. And I want to get to that in a second. If you didn't, that's the feedback to adjust your strategy, learn from it, and be a better trading going forward. Now, here's the big thing that I want to get across here to everybody. I'm going to make this black uh, bold for you right there. Okay. Struggling traders continue to fight the reality of the market. Traders who level up put their ego in a corner and say, I did my best, but I didn't get the feedback that I wanted in the form of profits. Now you have to take that next step and say, is my edge not working? <laughs> is it even an edge at all? Did I not follow my edge or did I simply not see it? If you have a good edge and you didn't see it, then you got to reduce the size of your list. But here's the big thing I want to get across. And this is kind of getting back to that mastermind session that I had last week. One of the single biggest threads that, that we're going through all of those people in that business mastermind I was in last week is paying attention to what works and more importantly, paying attention to what works and adjusting to the feedback that you get from results. Everybody has a feedback loop of success. So your own personal trading, literally every single trading decision you make that leads to results should be viewed by you as opportunities to adjust or opportunities to do more of what's working. Never fight the market. Never. <laughs> Nobody will win. I got. Let me shut that beeper off. <laughs> Nobody will win in the market. So that's why we have those guidelines. Nobody will win fighting the market. Let me just say that again. So if you if you did not capitalize on this massive five week rally that we just had, you have to ask yourself why and what was I watching? Why and what did I miss? You start to ask yourself those simple questions every day. All of a sudden, you see the market differently as this giant game of what can I see sooner? How can I take advantage of it? And how do I know if it's still working? It was a beautiful, beautiful January right into February, and I hope you took advantage of it. So we're going to kind of break this down a little bit more. You can actually see here um, sector rotation. Now, one of the things that we actually have here is um, a breakdown. The way that I do it for our community every day is I break down sector rotation and then the stocks that are affecting that analysis of the sector. So we're looking for money that's flowing into and money that's flowing out of individual sectors. Keep your trading simple. Just follow the deep pockets that have all of that research and all those billions of dollars. Just piggyback on them. But we got to learn the system of optimal entry too. It's seeing when it's obvious and finding the right entries, a little bit different and working those positions and when to add those kind of things. But what I want you to do is, again, this whole daily ticker for today is what I do for the community every single day, kind of giving you a sneak peek on Mondays to go behind the scenes and see what I'm looking at. Hopefully, I'm going to inspire you to maybe do your, a little bit deeper research, maybe even join me for the next two weeks. I'd love to see you in the boot camp. You could also learn about that below. But I want to break this down for you, and I want to show you how to read this document. And we also have a options market analysis this week from uh, John Napolitano from uh, John Napolitano. Uh, options trading pro. So I want you to read that as well, because John actually kind of has the same breakdown that we do, that the Fed kind of missed that soft landing. We just had this massive move in the other direction. So it's really kind of interesting. 
So if you download a copy of this free selfie you make, you can actually look on the uh, site over here. We actually have a legend. If you happen to not see the outline, you can just make sure you click over here and you can actually just work your way through this. So we just looked at the market and now we're into sector rotation. You can actually see that we're breaking down sector by sector. Um, and the one thing I want to talk about here as we work our way down, if the market happens to have a little bit more of a bearish tone to it, where let's say we do have some profit taking this week, the healthcare sector and the energy sector has been completely demolished over the last week or so. Energy has been really false breakouts. Uh, industry groups, we break this down a little bit more. You can see what CarMax and Carvana did recently. And you can actually see the um, uh, retail stocks, actually. Kohl's, nice breakout. Internet content. So you can actually see all the way down. And then we're breaking it all the way down into uh, the stock pick of the week that I'm looking for today. So I wanted to make sure that I started this week off with some mindset stuff. I wanted to make sure that we looked at the market in general. We obviously started talking about Michael Burry and the definition of being wrong and how you could learn from his trades right now. A little bit different perspective. But remember, opinions are expensive. Trading your edge is the way to go. Okay. So what I'd like you to do is, again, click down into the description. You can get this entire newsletter, including seeing the option breakdown uh, by John in there. And he gives some, some specific stuff on implied volatility and the way the market's trading right now. Uh, and see if we got, we're on the same page. See if my analysis on sector rotation in the market is the way that you think. Uh, if it is, kind of cool. If it's not, don't hesitate to leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Um, and anything I can do for you, just let me know. All right. So if you want to uh, join me in the boot camp for the next 14 days, I'd love to see you. If you have any follow-up questions on anything we talked about today uh, or what we have in today's daily ticker newsletter, leave a comment below. I'll always get back to you. It might take a day or two, but I promise I'll get back to you. All right. Thanks so much, everybody. I will see you soon.